Hi everyone, uh, Stepan here. Today I'm going to start a series on the great Jose Raul Capablanca, uh, the third world champion and probably one of the best and best known players for their playing style when you only look at the players from the first half of the 20th or the 19th century. He was actually good, uh, unlike many of the, the the early good players who were whose play was unsound or whose play was only good against weaker players capablanca was a really good player and his technique was impeccable his end, his end game play is what he's most famous for and he was a well deserved uh, world champion okay uh, i'm going to start the series on his games and we're going to have a look at all of his recorded games from the earliest ones and the first game that was ever recorded uh, was a Queen Odds game played in 1893 when Capablanca was only four years old. He is the one Queen up and he's playing Ramon Iglesias, who I couldn't find much information on. The only thing I know is that he played uh, Harry Nelson Pillsbury in 1901 and Pillsbury was blindfolded. So someone wrote on chess games that uh, Mr. Iglesias is like. Uh, a guy who strong players beat so maybe that's true anyway he was probably a strong player when he when he played Pillsbury in 1901 okay so before we start uh, with the game I'll just give you a brief intro on Capablanca uh, he was the world champion from 1921 to 1927 he finally beat Lasker in 21 after trying to arrange a couple of matches against him and in 1927 he lost to Alekhine or Aliekin. Uh, the funny thing is that Aliekin had never beaten Capablanca before the match and then he, he, he won the match. Uh, in the Lasker game he, he was never defeated. Uh, he won 9-5 with 4 wins and, and no losses, so a, a great score. Uh, he was born in Havana, he was Cuban. Uh, his first great result was beating the Cuban champion Juan Corzo in a match in 1901, uh, so Capablanca was, what, 4, 15, 16, something like that. Uh, oh, sorry, he was 13, actually. And he defeated Frank Marshall uh, in 1909 in a match, so when he was uh, 21. And that got him the invitation to the 1911 San Sebastian tournament, which was one of the strongest tournaments uh, of the early 20th century. Rubinstein played, Nimcovic played, Taras played, and he, he won the tournament convincingly. And he had a few more strong tournaments before his match with Lasker in 21. When he finally won the match, he was... Just uh, everybody agreed that he was the best player in the world. Okay, uh, he was undefeated from 1916 to 1924, which is insane, uh, which includes the, the match against Lesker. So he basically had eight years without the loss. Uh, he lost the title, as I said, to, to Alekin or Alekine. He tried to rearrange the, re rearrange the game, but he couldn't. And his final, uh, his final tournament was Avro 1938, a very, a very important and strong tournament where he didn't do well. There were already upcoming players at, at that time and he died in 1942. Okay, so he died fairly young. Okay, now let's look at the game. So Capablanca is four years old. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you, but children who are four years old, even if you give them a queen against actual chess players, that, that's no good. Okay, so uh, Ramon Iglesias played e4 and Capablanca played the Petrov, knight f6 or whatever this is called when you're a queen up. So knight takes e5, knight takes e4, that's fairly uncommon, usually people play d6 now, but okay, here's he's four years old. So d4, but that's justified because white doesn't really have queen e2, so you can just take knight takes e4, no need for d6. d6 now, knight f3, bishop e7, and the game of course isn't too interesting because white is a queen down. What is interesting is how black handles his position and how black tries to smartly simplify and smartly reduce counterplay of the white pieces and how Capablanca at four understood how to prevent his opponent from, from overrunning his position with peace activity. So he, he kept everything under control, of course he was a queen up, but still he kept strong player's pieces under control. Knight of six, c4, white of course has to try and expand castles, knight to c3, knight c6, a3. And for a four-year-old kid, 
this is very disciplined play. So if you were looking at a chess te textbook for, for beginners, this is what you should be doing. Develop your pieces, get your king castle. So Capablanca really isn't giving uh, Iglesias the chance to, to attack. a6, bishop d2. b6, restraining the knight. Not the best move, probably. If, if you're going to play bishop b7, then fine, but b6 is kind of a waste of time. He probably wanted to prevent c5, although that's prevented by the e7 bishop. Bishop to d7, king b1, knight a5. Okay, provides the outpost for the knight, which is which is nice. And this is one of the moves I wanted to... I wanted to talk about b6, seems like a bad move, but if it was... if he came up with that to be able to play knight a5, then that's a very good plan and very strong for a four-year-old kid. That's That's... Thinking ahead in a way that normal children cannot, I believe. Okay, rook to c1 played, uh, which I think just runs into knight b3. Okay, knight b3. Uh, so rook c2, and he doesn't trade off pieces. He plays c5, he prevents... Since the rook came to the c file, he simply prevents any expansion uh, white could go for and just controls more space. Rook e8, getting the rook to the open file, h4, white has to go crazy, and b5, now simply, well, he's actually giving up a pawn for an attack, white doesn't take it, now there have to be some trades, again, he doesn't take uh, the g4 pawn immediately, he takes on c4 first, knight f6, bishop f6, and now after bishop c4, now he takes on g4, and everything is under con complete control, he didn't even move his queen yet, okay, so... So bishop f3, but I like the way how he controlled everything with his bishops. This move, bishop f3, is the second point in the game, which I really like after after knight a5. So with this move, he's basically controlling the entire board. Okay, he's also putting pressure on uh, on d5, but I think the main point is he's training, he's restraining all the pieces and making it very hard for white to do much after rook h3, which is the only sensible move. Bishop takes d5, and and everything is everything is controlled. The black pieces are controlling the entire board. Even if he is a queen up, that's pretty relevant. If you remove this queen off the board, black is still much better. Okay, h5 played. Bishop e6, great bishops. Rook g3, g6. He's of course not afraid to weaken his king because white doesn't really have that many attacking forces. Okay, bishop to h6, rook to g8, initiating trades. Doubling rooks, rook takes g2, and now queen f6, a very sensible decision. He, of course, wishes to give up the queen for two pieces, and, and that's it. White resigned uh, two or three moves later. Of course, too much material down. And I wanted to start with this game, even though it's not a normal chess game. I just didn't want to skip over it because Capablanca was four. And be because he kept controlling the board very sensibly and very smartly, and... And I enjoyed the game. Okay, uh, next Wednesday, uh, every Wednesday, we are going to have a look at the Capablanca game. And next Wednesday, we will start with his match, uh, with the match he played in 1901 uh, against Enrique Del Monte. And that's going to be proper chess. He was, of course, uh, 12 years old already or something like that. So a much stronger player. Okay, but as you can see, Capablanca was already very good at 4. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think. We are going to uh, start with Tal tomorrow. It's going to be Tal Thursdays or Tal Thursdays. And uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you soon. Bye-bye.